What's going on you guys, this is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer, bringing you another video on Transformers 1. This is the latest entry in the Transformers movie saga and I cannot wait to see what it has in store, especially after finding out that it will be somehow connected to Transformers Bumblebee and Transformers Rise of the Beast. You guys have heard me say that I really want this thing to do well and I really want there to be some good connectivity between these films because for the most part they all feel a little disjointed. Now that the Bayverse is no more, this is a brand new slate for the franchise and I really want them to do a good job and after hearing certain details I'm a bit concerned but we're gonna get into that after a word from our sponsors so picture this right you just got yourself a brand new phone and you're looking for the best mobile game to play with awesome visuals loads of powerful champions challenging bosses and tactical PvP content well why not try this cool game which I'm about to tell you about Raid Shadow Legends is the world's biggest best and most badass mobile game out there it's filled to the brim with features and things for players to do over the course of days, weeks, and even months, which includes the latest and biggest feature ever, the Cursed City. And mark my words, this is by far the toughest content raid has had since the release of the Doom Tower. It's a month-long excursion to the Cursed City of Centrinos, currently under the rule of Amayas the Lunar Archon, the final boss of this mode, which isn't a simple walk in the park. You'll need to clear stages of differing types across four districts to hunt down three Eclipse Keys. Once you do that, you can march right up to the Eclipse Tower to fight the big boss himself. So as you see, there's a lot to be excited about in regards to this event. For one, not everyone's playthrough is going to play out the same. I mean, we'll all start out at the same location, but we have the option of choosing out our own path through the Cursed City, allowing us to aim for specific locations. There's a ton of rewards to earn, and each month the Cursed City will reset with new battle conditions for stages and more rewards for you to claim. And it doesn't just stop there. To celebrate the holidays, we're getting Raid's Christmas Story, a holiday-themed event where you can follow Sir Nicholas through a festive adventure. By simply heading over to www.raidxmas.com, you can play this event and win both in-game and real-life prizes. Oh, and did I mention that this is absolutely free? So what are you waiting for? Go to the description on this video and click on my special link. By doing that or scanning this QR code, you can get two epic heroes, the very strong and epic champion Light Sworn, and once you hit level 15, an epic boss killer Juliana. You can find me in game under the name Random B Gamer, and if you're quick enough, you can even join my clan. Good luck, and I'll see you out on the battlefield. So yeah guys, about Transformers 1. The movie is going to be dropping in September the 12th of next year and I for one am excited about this. Originally it was slated to be released on July the 19th, 2024 but it was pushed back by Paramount Pictures. The reason being the multiple delays of Transformers Rise of the Beast and the collateral effect it had on other things such as the toy sales. Like you guys already know that the ROTB toys, they got released early in different boxes compared to what they were originally going to be released in because Hasbro needed to get that shelf space. But I don't think that's going to be a thing for this brand of toys because we know that Transformers 1 is still a ways off, man. We got an entire year before we're going to get a chance to witness this animated film. Given the fact that it is a CG animated movie that's been in the production oven for at least three years, I think it's safe to assume that they're pretty much finished with it. We're just waiting on them to begin the advertising of it and as I stated earlier this is going to be a continuation of the live action movie series which will expand the franchise telling the origin story of the Cybertronians and the relationship between Optimus Prime and his nemesis Megatron. The film will be directed by Toy Story 4's writer Josh Cooley and written by Cooley and the Transformers Share Universe Writers Room screenwriters Andrew Barra and Gabriel Ferrari who worked together on the Ant-Man and the Wasp script. From everything that's been revealed Transformers 1 will be a very different feel compared to the other entries in the franchise because as I said it's going to be an animated movie and usually when we get a film like this we know it's going to be a bit lighter in tone due to the more dark and chaotic nature of the live action counterparts but rest assured it is going to have a dark tone to it in certain areas especially when we start to see the big divide between Optimus Prime and Megatron and I am very much excited to see the design motif these characters will have because from what I've heard they look like they're these very caricaturized versions of themselves like they're supposed to be different yet familiar in a sense. Even though this movie is still upcoming, there are plenty of details about the film that have yet to be released due to onset scoops and official announcements. Most of the story is being kept tightly under wraps, but it seems to be strongly taking inspiration from the original story that was laid out in previous television and comic book adaptations. TF1 will chronologically serve as the first Transformers movie in the series and will be a prequel to that of Bumblebee and Transformers Rise of the Beast 
piece telling the origin story of all the different characters. And since we're on the topic of these characters, we have to talk about what Bumblebee's voice actor Keegan-Michael Key had to say about his performance for the character. Since this is an earlier take of these characters, they won't quite match what we've seen in Transformers Bumblebee and Rise of the Beast. So as opposed to being hardened war veterans, they're going to be young and naive in a sense. For example, back in June, the Thor actor Chris Hemsworth said he's going to be ditching his native Australian accent to differentiate the Autobot leader from Peter Cullen's iconic voice, saying, and I quote, The Optimus Prime that you hear on the screen in the films is an older and mature robot. You know, he's been around for many, many, many years. This is sort of the origin story, so it's the younger version of him. So there are sort of hints and colorings that hopefully resonate enough with the Optimus Prime we know, but is a youthful version of him and different, but he won't be Australian. So hopefully that puts you guys' worries to rest. I know some of you are a bit disappointed that Peter Cullen isn't going to be returning to do this version of Optimus Prime, but I'm pretty sure this is Orion Pax, guys. They keep saying that it's Optimus Prime, but I'm pretty sure he's going to have the name Orion Pax to separate him from what we know him to be nowadays. And another character that will be named something else from what we recognize today is that of Bumblebee, who will be going under the name B127, which rumors suggest is going to be a running gag throughout the film, because Bumblebee can't stand the name and he's going to become up with his own nicknames to call himself and he probably won't be called Bumblebee in this movie since it's already been established canonically that he was given that title by Charlie in his solo movie. But anyways, B's voice actor Keegan-Michael Key offered a tease of what his voice for the character will sound like, saying that his take on Bumblebee isn't all that different from his normal voice, which is a bit strange because we know that Keegan-Michael Key has a lot of range when it comes to his voice acting. Like if I told you that he was doing the voice of Toad from the Mario Brothers movie, you would think I was lying because it doesn't sound like him at all. It sounds like it's somebody else or they probably added some kind of modulations to his voice to give it a higher pitch. But according to the popular comic actor, Transformers 1 is going for a more naturalistic approach to its Autobots. I want you to hear what he has to say. Oh, the Transformers, yeah. The, the, the trans I, I'm playing Bumblebee, I, it's funny, not a lot of affectation to my voice. The director of, of this wanted, really just wanted, he goes, I really want your voice. I just want Keegan's voice. So it's kind of Keegan as Bumblebee. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see, it's interesting. It's not, it's unlike this where I'm working in a dialect or I'm doing something with like Super Mario Brothers where I'm really trying to disguise my voice. This one is, I'm, I'm bringing a lot of me to it. So yeah guys, I'm not sure about you, but I'm a little apprehensive about this because we already know that Keegan-Michael Key is a very bombastic voice actor. He's very loud and he adds so much energy to his characters. And while I do think that Bumblebee can have that since he is a more younger Autobot, I feel like it's a bit of a miscast. And while I'm behind most of the casting choices, I do feel like that's gonna to be something that's gonna make or break this film because for the most part it just feels like Hollywood stamping all these big names to it just to bring more casual viewers in and I will argue this until I'm purple in the face I feel like the characters are larger than the voice actors portraying them they're the ones on the marquee it shouldn't be the names that are bigger than these characters I'm not gonna be constantly reminding myself that hey this is Chris Hemsworth voicing Optimus Prime I'm gonna be seeing Optimus Prime man but another problem that I have with this casting for Bumblebee is that if it's going to take place before the previous films, that being Transformers Bumblebee and Rise of the Beast, it is a totally missed opportunity to bring back Dylan O'Brien to voice Bumblebee. Because if you guys remember, he voiced Bumblebee for the first half of the Bumblebee movie before B lost his voice. And I can't help but feel like Paramount and Hasbro are dropping the ball by not bringing him back to add some more connective tissue to these movies that they're trying to set up. I already felt like Dylan had been robbed of his opportunity to give new life to this character since Hasbro Bro and Paramount seem adamant about giving him that stupid radio voice gimmick, but now it just seems like they're pulling the rug from under his feet, and it's a bit of a shame, man. Now Bumblebee is going to sound a lot more mature than what he was once he was in the actual war. But minor ranting aside, we gotta talk about the toys, because as you know, this is the lifeblood of the Transformers, and usually when we see these type of leaks, we know that they're going to be very indicative of what we could possibly see in the movie. But there are certain times where it's not the case, so let's just take everything we hear with a small pinch of salt here. Yesterday it was reported that the toy line associated with the movie will hit shelves on August 1st, 2024 in time for the movie's release on September the 13th, 2024. And it has a new gimmick line called Transformers 1 Prime Changers, which will be priced at $59.99 US dollars. However, do bear in mind that this price tag is from an overseas listing they've received, and the actual prices in the United States may vary. So yeah guys, even though that price does seem steep, 
just keep in mind that that's not how it's going to be over here in the states those could be for hong kong australia canadian or singapore or something like that usually when it comes to a gimmicky type figure they're a lot cheaper than that of a studio series or deluxe class figure so yeah let's not raise those pitchforks just yet but anyways in terms of the name prime changes i feel like this could mean a multitude of things since we are dealing with a earlier version of optimus prime that being orion pax this could possibly allude to each character going through an extreme change by the end of the film because that's always been the story of orion pax and megatron orion pax gets beat by megatron and he goes through this cool transformation and becomes this autobot general who's super tough and super stoic in the form of optimus prime it's already been confirmed that alpha Tryon will be in this film and as we already know he is the machine smith of Cybertron who ultimately reconstructs Orion Pax into Optimus Prime. So yeah this Prime Changer gimmick can be these characters essentially going from being these weak characters who ultimately transform into the Prime versions of themselves. But with all that said I think I'm gonna go ahead and bring this video to a close and turn it over to you guys. What do you think about these new details? Do you agree with Keegan Michael Key's casting as Bumblebee? And how do you feel about the Prime Changers gimmick? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I ask you to like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you shared it with all your friends and family members on all the different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG, aka the Random Black Gamer, signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Yeah!